Okay, so welcome to another whiteboard testing video. Um, thank you so much for your, all your um, views and subscriptions so far. It's, uh, makes it makes it worthwhile. Makes us want to do more. Uh, today I'm joined by John Stevenson. Uh, you may know him on Twitter as Stevio1967. And both of us were recently at um, a peer conference in, uh, in Nottingham uh, and about models. And I did a talk on the test automation pyramid and how it drives me mad how people refer to it. We had some good debate on the day and subsequently John did a blog post about it. So the power of Twitter said that we should do a video together on the test pyramid. So here we are. Um, so yeah, let's, let's have a look at the various forms of this test pyramid. Well, test automation pyramid, as hopefully yeah, we'll elaborate on. Yeah, I mean, uh, Richard, I think what we should start with when we're doing this is we should start with the history of where it all came from and what the original ideas were for the pyramid and what um, they wanted to get out of it. So the original pyramid was done by Mike Cohen. And the original pyramid was called the Test Automation Pyramid. It was solely about automation, nothing else. And it was saying that you should do more unit tests rather than service, they called it service, it's been changed since, than UI. And the only reason why they did this was one very simple reason. Mike wanted to highlight the fact of the value. It costs, and I'm not sure if that applies anymore, but it costs, and did cost more, to do automation at the UI level rather than the service, rather than the unit. So yeah, the focus of the pyramid was to say these are the costs of automation. It costs less at the bottom to do more of it, and it costs more at the top. And that's where the history of the pyramid came from. And it was solely for test automation. Now, I'll pass on to Richard here, as, we, as it became adapted, as we went forward in time. So we noticed a small change, but quite a significant change. And the word automation seemed to get dropped from everyone referenced this pyramid, and it became known as the test pyramid. And then people added this delightful cloud at the top to describe manual testing. Uh, and also then it got elaborated a bit more, so this service layer started being expanded to involve API integration component. Um, but the biggest difference, as we've highlighted, is it became known as basically the testing pyramid. And it wasn't about automation anymore, it was about testing com a complete life cycle of testing in a way. Uh, and that's where we started to run into various issues, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, they did mention, on, on the people that used it later, they did mention in each of the layers, they still mentioned and added the word automation or automated to each of these layers. So it was still in there, and that's where the quantity started of mixing up manual testing and automation in the same diagram to indicate that the manual testing was done all up there. What about manual testing down in the bottom part of the pyramid? That seemed to have being misrepresented at that time. Yeah, I think so as well. And then we had even more elaborations on the model then. So Alistair Scott came up with what he called the anti-pattern to this. And it was basically the pyramid had been inverted. Um, so you have a lot of QE automation, you have a lot of integration, and you have very few unit. Um, and then but there was a big manual testing cloud at the top. Um, and this one highlighted to me a potential a kind of adaption on the model that would show that the value of testing and how you can't do one without the other is and you can't write good automation without having some testing in the first place. So I took the model and I basically got rid of the various layers within the thing, um, basically like so, and then I tried to just view it as an actual ice cream cone. So it was called, it was known as the ice cream anti pattern, the ice cream cone, and I started to think that actually we've got testing pretty much is throughout. So if we make this into like an ice cream cone, as in like, you know, the ones you buy from the shop, and as someone pointed out at Mute, there's always a little block of chocolate at the bottom. Um, it's irrelevant to the model, but it needs to be there. Um, so one of the things I thought of is that, you know, we have um, ice cream is all the way through this cone. So, that, you know, there's basically ice cream everywhere. But what that's telling me is that testing is at the core of any automation effort, as in you can't write Regardless of what layer this is, you can't write good automation without doing some testing in the first place, otherwise you don't know what you're automating. So to adapt this model, we have ice cream as in um, creating these checks, but it's also the checks are keeping testing in place, as in they're not, they're not mandatory, but the output, of, the output that comes out of these checks is useful to drive certain test ideas. 
But then there was also the adaptation. If anyone's read some of the things I write about with regards to automation in testing, there's things that add on the top. So I just joke that, you know, who's ever had an ice cream with uh, hundreds and thousands on that, you know, we have, there's a lot more to automation in testing than just, um, than just automated checks at various levels, be it the UI, GUI, or, um, the, the UI integration or the API level. There's also tools that we can build that support the rest of testing. Um, so I don't know what John thought of this, but it pushed him enough to write the blog post, so we'll um, we can see. Someone added a flake as well. Oh, there was some tools. And... Okay, it'll have to be an orange flake, it's the only pan I've got. Yeah. There we go, pan flake at the top. So this indicated on the diagram of, uh, what we were talking about was it indicates the tool sets as well that we use. So the, the hundreds and thousands, the sprinkles and the flake and stuff are the tools that you would use while you are testing. So, so it becomes, and I like the model in some respects, but it becomes more about tool assisted testing, which is what automation is. Automation is tool assisted. It's not automation, and we can separate the checking and testing out of it. But testing is throughout, and testing is the core of what we do and what we should be doing. And the artifacts we produce from that is the automated checks. So it's not one or the other. You need both. There's, you know, we have a, a great debate in our industry about checking or testing, which has the most value. Well, for me, when I'm doing this, the value is where the context of what is important at that time. It may be writing lots of automation. It may be writing lots of undoing, executing lots of tests. And the only thing we, we found this model, what I found, is it doesn't show that execution part. So we, I think you turned it into a 3D column yeah, afterwards. I think that was just to show that there is, um, without going into layers, it was just to be a side view, just to show that there is, there is a, you know, there was obviously be a lot of testing information in, inside the ice cream cone, but then I, stood, I, I still did draw the layers on. Um, but then the layers become an issue for me because I don't really, I wouldn't really say that there should be layers, it's just that there is some automated checks going on. Um, it just doesn't matter what they are, but it's hard to de de depict when you're saying that we've gone from a pyramid that has clear layers into an anti pattern ice cream cone that's no longer an anti pattern. It's kind of showing a different view, but it still isn't great. You know, we can't go around showing people pictures of ice cream cones as part of a model. Um, so, yeah, it's more that, you know, the model for me, when we, as soon as we brought the word, we got rid of the word automation and we started just putting manual testing on the top like a cloud, it just didn't make any sense. There wasn't, it didn't show that the two were tightly integrated as in you can't do one without the other. And um, whereas I tried in this attempt just to show that, you know, they are one thing. They're not, you know, if you're, you're trying to solve a testing problem. You're not trying to solve the automation problem or the manual testing problem. You're trying to solve the testing problem. So how can you make these things work together? So that's what I tried to depict here, um, but he's still the picture of an ice cream cone <laughs> at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, that's what the problem was that we got with the dropped automation. This just as a just for automation, there's very little wrong with this. No. it does make good sense. You know, even though it depends on the product, of course. You know, you could generalize and say that unit test and API unit checks and API checks are quicker. They they do run quicker. Um, you know, and the UI as well, but. It, Again, it's just a model and it depends on the human environment you're in. It might make sense for you to have loads of UI checks. It might not. Yeah. It depends on your stack. Um, it depends what platform For me, this is still relevant for most of the stuff I work in. It's still relevant as a model to explain to people that your focus for automation, for the value of the automation, not the testing, but the automation checking side, is try and keep it in that sort of pyramid shape. In the context, as Richard rightly explains, the context may change. If you're working in, say, mobile with lots of front-end UI where it's cheap to automate that sometimes, then do that. It may come up to be a cylinder instead of a column, but that's not a problem. What we're trying to explain in this video is to give people the knowledge of the history of where the pyramid came from and where it's gone to. And there is lots of concern about where it's gone to from where it's come from. And I think the, the original reason behind why it came about has been lost. And I still think that original reason holds valid kudos in, in what we do as testers. So yeah, as we said, I created this just to try and show an insight of moving, testing and checking together, uh, kind of keeping in line with the existing history that we've had with this pyramid. Um, but John's taken this on a bit further, which is why this video, that's why John's come to do this video with us. So John has created his own model. 
um, and we're going to elaborate on that in, in the next video. Um, so thank you for watching. Thank you. And I will see you in the next one.